chapter 20. From there Abraham journeyed toward the territory of the Negev, and lived between Kadesh and Shur. And he sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech king of Gerar sent and took Sarah. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. Now Abimelech had not approached her, so he said, Lord, will you kill an innocent people? Did he not himself say to me, She is my sister? And she herself said, He is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and the innocence of my hands I have done this. Then God said to him in the dream, Yes, I know that you have done this in the integrity of your heart, and it was I who kept you from sinning against me. Therefore I did not let you touch her. Now then, return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, so that he will pray for you and you shall live. But if you do not return her, know that you shall surely die, you and all who are yours. So Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and told them all these things. And the men were very much afraid. Then Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? And how have I sinned against you that you have brought on me and my kingdom a great sin? You have done to me things that ought not to be done. And Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you see that you did this thing? Abraham said, I did it because I thought there is no fear of God at all in this place, and they will kill me because of my wife. Besides, she is indeed my sister, the daughter of my father, though not the daughter of my mother, and she became my wife. And when God caused me to wander from my father's house, I said to her, This is the kindness you must do me. At every place to which we come, say of me, He is my brother. Then Abimelech took sheep and oxen and male servants and female servants, and gave them to Abraham, and returned Sarah his wife to him. And Abimelech said, Behold, my land is before you. Dwell where it pleases you. To Sarah he said, Behold, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. It is a sign of your innocence in the eyes of all who are with you, and before every one you are vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to God, and God healed Abimelech, and also healed his wife and female slaves, so that they bore children. For the Lord had closed all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Chapter 21 The Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did to Sarah as he had promised. And Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham called the name of his son who was born to him, whom Sarah bore him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, God has made laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh over me. And she said, Who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, laughing. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not be heir with my son Isaac. And the thing was very displeasing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Be not displeased because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you, for through Isaac shall your offspring be named. And I will make a nation of the son of the slave woman also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water, and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water and the skin was gone, she put the child under one of the bushes. Then she went and sat down opposite him a good way off, about the distance of a bowshot, for she said, Let me not look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy, and the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Up, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. And God was with the boy, and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. At that time Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, said to Abraham, God is with you in all that you do. Now therefore swear to me here by God that you will not deal falsely with me or with my descendants or with my posterity, but as I have dealt kindly with you, so you will deal with me and with the land where you have sojourned. And Abraham said, I will swear. When Abraham reproved Abimelech about a well of water that Abimelech's servants had seized, Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this thing. You did not tell me, and I have not heard of it until today. So Abraham took sheep and oxen and gave them to Abimelech, and the two men made a covenant. Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock apart, and Abimelech said to Abraham, What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs that you have set apart? 
He said, These seven ewe lambs you will take from my hand, that this may be a witness for me that I dug this well. Therefore that place was called Beersheba, because there both of them swore an oath. So they made a covenant at Beersheba. Then Abimelech and Phicol, the commander of his army, rose up and returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba and called there on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. And Abraham sojourned many days in the land of the Philistines. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. We just read Genesis 20 and 21, and what you find in Genesis 20 is uh, Abimelech. He takes Sarah as to be his wife. She was uh, 89 years old, and um, she must be beautiful to be desired to have as wife. Um, anyway, so he takes her as wife, and the Lord shows up and tells Abimelech, saying that, you know, she's already married. Do not do anything to her. You and your household and your uh, everyone uh, will be destroyed. And so Abimelech went to Abraham and said, what is this all about? Why did you lie to me? And, and Abraham said, I told her that she's my sister. And Sarah also told uh, his, my brother is because we're fearing for our lives. And, and so, wait a minute. Abraham is like a, a father of faith. And we see him like this. He lies about it. And this is not the first time. He did that in Egypt. And so he does it again. And uh, many times when we see people in the Bible who are great in faith, a man of God, they fail many times as well. We see life of David. What did David do? David commits adultery and kill her husband. And it's just like, are you serious? And they already knew the Lord. They knew the Lord, but they had to grow from it. David confessed his sin. And, and uh, he had to pay the consequences of that sin. But anyways, all these great men of God, they have to grow into it. So I want you to understand that even though we make mistakes, it's part of growing. And listen, we don't give up. We continue to pursue and continue to go on with our life, trusting in God, confessing our sin, and stand up again and go and go and go and continue to walk with God. And that's what it means to be a Christian, is to be growing from our mistakes. So, um, and Genesis chapter 21, we find Sarah now has a baby named Isaac. And they named him Isaac, and which, which means laughter. And uh, Ishmael, the, the slave woman, uh, Hagar's son, which is born through Abraham, and makes fun of him or does something to him. So Sarah was so upset. She said, get rid of that slave woman. And so Abraham reluctantly, he didn't want to, but he had to uh, send them away. And uh, in the middle of desert, going nowhere, they found themselves without water. So Ishmael was dehydrated and is ready to die and is suffering, is crying. And so she laid him down and she walks away where she could see uh, uh, a bow shot away uh, where she could see him. 
but she could not bear watch him die. And the Lord shows up to her and says, uh, uh, to Hagar, don't worry, I'll take care of your son. He'll be okay. And uh, that uh, he will be a great nation. And sure enough, he does. He is becomes a father of a nation. Uh, and the Arabs were uh, from Ishmael and all the surrounding um, Israel, all the other nation, the Arab countries, they are the descendant of Ishmael. Now God shows this well and they were able to survive. And so what you find here is that God's kindness goes beyond those people who are with the promise. Even those people without promises, God's uh, grace is applied for them. However, uh, there's, they are not promised child. In order to keep, uh, be a promised child, you have to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ and have a personal relationship with Him. That is the only way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Now, in Matthew uh, chapter 6, what you find is uh, 25. It speaks about uh, the, how we should not worry. Why worry about our life? You worry about your what to eat, well, what you would drink, or what to wear. Those kind of things, those are only good for the body. There's, life is much more than your body. There's something that is greater than just, you know, having a lot of things and having what you want. Um, and Jesus says, don't you realize, look at the fields, all the trees and all the flowers, all the birds. Who take care of them? God says, I do. I take care of them, and they're so beautiful. When you see the beautiful sunrise and the and this beautiful mountain, the ocean, oh, God takes care of everything. So don't worry about those things that are food uh, or drink or what you wear. But there's something that you should seek more. And uh, verse 33 says, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. God says, don't worry about it. I'll take care of it. But first thing that you want to do is think about his kingdom and his righteousness. What does that mean? That means that, the, I talked about it yesterday, that it's more important than having a lot of stuff. Why you want to be a doctor? Why you want to be a lawyer? Why do you want to do all these things? Uh, so I could make a lot of money and so I could have all the things that I want. Is that is that the purpose? God says, no, 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 no. There's greater thing than that. That's for your kingdom. His kingdom is two things that I talked about yesterday, and that is your devotion to God, your relationship with God, to know God and love God and serve God. That is that is most important thing in your life. Secondly, what is important is that you help other people to love and serve and to to know God and we give ourselves. So becoming a doctor to make yourself wealthy is not the focus. The people who are Christian, people who have followed Jesus, they are concerned about His kingdom. They want to be a doctor so that they could help the people who cannot pay for, for, for themselves. They want to be a missionary where they want to go and help with their, the knowledge of a medical uh, knowledge. They, they want to help other people. That's what kingdom people live by. This is not living for my kingdom, for His kingdom. And that's when you do that, when you focus on that, God promised, I'll add everything to you. So don't worry about it. God will take care of you. He will take care of you. And so with that, let's pray. Father God, we just pray that you would help us to really focus on you and live a life not for the things of material or things of luxury that we could have. Lord, help us to live, Lord God, for your kingdom, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.